Well, South Africans can brace themselves for more power cuts. ESCOM is warning that the first three months of 2023 will be even more challenging. One energy expert says poor people are spending even more kilowatts than rich people. David Lipschitz believes they, rather, if they work together, they could halve their electricity prices. And he joins me now to take this conversation forward. David, always a pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much for your time. Now, when ESCOM sends out, uh, you know, a, a statement that not every South African, uh, South African would like to stop the new year with uh, that the first three months would be quite a challenging year break it down fast what exactly do they mean how will January to March potentially look like when it comes to electricity uh, good morning to Mello. good morning to NCA uh, good morning to everybody happy Christmas and uh, happy festive season even with all the blackouts and the darkness around um, accidents and things uh, we need to try and look forward uh, with happiness and joyfulness as much as we can and try to look past the, the current crisis and the current issues. Um, I think that we really know that ESCOM have load shedding at 28 gigawatts and below that. But ESCOM by now should have 75 gigawatts on the grid. So ESCOM have, have approximately one third of the electricity on the grid that they told us they would have back in 2004 mm. by now. Mm. Um, so, you know, we, we have the two new coal power stations, which have been designed incorrectly based on the quality of the coal and the kind of suppliers that we have in South Africa. We have another coal power station that should already be online. Um, so if you go and look at how much electricity was consumed uh, on Christmas Day and yesterday and today and during the holiday season, you will discover that uh, the really big uh, users, in fact, a lot of companies are closed at the moment uh, for the December three-week holiday. Uh, the universities are closed. The petrol stations are probably doing a lot less work, although a lot of people are driving their cars on holidays, but not to work. So the roads theoretically are less congested, although you get the, the rush at 11 a.m. Mm. Uh, when people are going to the beach and so on, as opposed to 7 a.m., when people are going to work. So I think what's, what ESCOM have said is that we're going to have a big crisis. I think they finally admitted mm -hmm. what some of us already knew in 2004 from the government's own white papers in 1998 and 2003 that the prediction was we would have an energy crisis from 2008 to 2030. And what we need to do is we need to look at what we can do to work together to mitigate and solve these problems. Right. And, and looking at usage alone, um, I, I found it interesting that you mentioned, David, that it seems more poor people uh, use or rather spend more kilowatts than rich people. And this especially those who are, of course, off the grid using generators. Yeah. So what, what, I, what I said is that people that are off the grid that don't have access to grid supply electricity mm. that are using generators historically have been spending more than people that are, have got grid electricity. Right. So, for example, 20 years ago or 25 years ago when our electricity cost was, say, in, in fact, 2008, our electricity cost was 50 cents a kilowatt hour in the city of Cape Town. Now it's close to 3 around 30. But back then, you know, a person with a generator living in an off-grid community might have been spending 5 rand a kilowatt hour. Now it's closer to 8 rand a kilowatt hour with the cost of diesel being so high and so on. Yeah. Um, we, maybe even more than that. So the point is that grid electricity uh, should be a lot cheaper than diesel electricity. We already know that ESCOM are complaining that they're spending billions of rands a month on diesel generation, which is inefficient, which should be used for peaking power only. Um, and in fact, you know, there are other alternatives. We know, for example, that renewable energy grid tie without batteries, that cost has come down 90 percent over the last 15 years. And with batteries, the cost has come down 95 percent over the past 15 years. And not only that, but because we're now using lithium ion batteries as opposed to using lead acid batteries, they're much less, they're much less expensive and they're much quicker to charge, mm. which means that you can have a much smaller battery bank and a much bigger solar array and you can keep those batteries charged. Now, what's happening is that my, my colleagues, the other energy experts, and I'm really glad we need to have a cross-section of views. It's very important that there isn't only a single story. It's very important that we have different people saying different things and that we're able to put the whole picture together. I don't think that there are too many people 
who can do that. But what my my what my suggestions have been and what they continue to be is that we must try to get the, the small users, such as myself, such as uh, small businesses, we must try to get them off the main grid. Mm. Now, when I say off the main grid, I don't mean disconnected. I mean that they don't need to buy electricity from the main grid during the 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. period. And that the only time that we should be buying electricity from that grid is between 10 p.m. and 6 a.m. when the cost is very small with time of use tariffs. Yeah. And that what we should be doing is that when ESCOM has got a crisis at 7 a.m. or at 7 p.m., that they say, but the sun isn't shining, but my batteries are full, millions of people like myself, our batteries are full, we're ready to supply, we want to supply, we want to be involved with the grid, we want to be part of making South Africa great. So we want the big users, the smelters and the steel industry and the car industry mm -hmm. and the supermarket, the shopping centers, they must be operating because that's where the big employment is. And so those kinds of people need the kind of what's called baseload electricity from the coal, nuclear, hydroelectric power stations, while the rest of us can take 17 gigawatts off the grid. And what, what I've been suggesting is that, for example, Kai Lecce, Guguletu, Soweto, you know, the townships, that they get together, they work with each other to actually produce the electricity that South Africa needs, not just with renewable energy, but also with biodigesters, with sewerage mining, with a lot of other capability. You know, one of the things that when you look around, you can see that in South Africa, people have got a lot of capability and it's not being tapped. And the capability lends itself to an environment where not that much uh, education in terms of a nuclear engineer needs to spend 10 years at university and another 10 years of experience before they can operate a nuclear power station. Right. A person installing a renewable energy system or a biodigester system or a sewage mining or a hot water system or an air conditioning system from the sun, that kind of thing, you know, maybe needs six months to two years of education. Right. So, David, so it, if, it, we look it, at what, if I may just jump in there because we're about to run out of time, please. is that why you encourage uh, South Africans to get together, to work together? Because you further say that this uh, could have uh, electricity halt. So what I'm saying is that if we work together, um, the poor people, the middle class, the people in, in suburbs, in communities, if we work together, mm. we can reduce our electricity cost by up to 30 percent in maybe two or three years. If we reduce our electricity cost by 30 percent, we're going to reduce our water cost by 70 percent, assuming that we do desalination. And I know that there are people in Cape Town, for example, that say we can't desalinate the water near Cape Town because it's very polluted, but we could desalinate the water further from Cape Town and pump it to Cape Town. You know, we pump oil thousands of miles kilometers. We can pump water the same. So, you know, there's the, and then once once electricity and water costs come down, the petrol price will come down, the diesel price will come down, the food price will come down. But we need to look at the big picture. We need to really find a way that we can work together. Mm. I don't know how to solve that problem. I'm, I'm a scientist. I'm not a sociologist. We need to find the sociologists to work together with the scientists, to work together with engineers, to work together with ESCOM, to work together with government, all together in this fantastic melting pot that we call South Africa and we make things work in 2023. Well, I appreciate you speaking to me about this, David Lipschitz, energy uh, analyst and expert joining me this morning, of course, at the back of uh, that ESCOM statement that the first three months of 2023 uh, will be challenging when it comes to electricity.